Fables Radio, an unofficial audio adaptation of the graphic novel series Fables by Bill Willingham. Chapter 2. The Unusual Suspects. If you laid so much as a hand on her... I didn't. I swear. Well, what'd you find? I have a few tests to run. Tests? Did your nose stop working? It's all rose reds. Is she... is she in there? <sighs> Big B. Snow, I, I'm sorry. There, there was nothing I could do. Get out of my way. Snow, don't. You can't go in there. Rose! Snow, look at these over here. They're beautiful. <laughs> Picking berries first, Rose. Then flowers. Do you think Mother will like these? I think Mother will like that you were thinking of her. Be careful of the thorns. You worry too much. <gasps> what was that? I don't know. Is it a wolf? Shh. What are you going to do with that? Stay there. Rose? No! Rose! <laughs> Rose, will you get down from there for, for five minutes and talk to me? Ugh, you are such a killjoy. That's what I've always said. Shut up, Charming. Ooh, ever the ice queen. <laughs> what is your damage, Snow? Besides you two? Oh, don't make me choose, lovey. You know, I'll pick the fun one. I said shut up! Rose! Rose! Who's there? I'm armed. My lady. Gaffer Wolf. Where is she? Where is my sister? Right where you left her. I... I do not know the way. No! No! Rose! No more happily ever after. No more, no more, no more happily ever after. No more happily ever after. That girl will not let you get a good night's sleep, will she? What are you doing here, Colin? Hey, you blown out a pig's house and tried to eat his brothers, I think he gets lifetime squatting rights. You're not dodging the farm again. Relax, it's just a little me time. I needed a place to crash. Uh, give me a couple of days and I'll be out of your hair. Go home. Now. Do you see what time it is, man? <sighs> There's a truck upstate first thing tomorrow. Either you hitch a ride to the farm, or I'm gonna ship you there in a box. He might even get some breathing holes. What's gone up your ass? Where's your sense of hospitality? I'm being downright gracious. Tell you what, I'll even fix you breakfast in the morning. Got some primo bacon in the fridge, free range organic, fed a steady diet of hazelnuts and sunshine or some shit. You are a goddamn monster, you know that? You're on that truck in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what kind of line were you gonna use anyway? Hey doll, I smelled your sadness from six floors down and decided to call to check up on you. Sounds like that'd be a real big hit with the ladies. Fuck off, Colin. <laughs> Sweet dreams, lover boy. Pinocchio! 
Over here! Why am I up in the ass crack of morning in Greenwich Village? Get inside! Quick! Um, oh, good morning, Pinocchio. Uh, Flycatcher, it's not supposed to say happening. Um, it's happily. No more happily ever after. Oh, sorry. Blue? Gotta wait for me there. Just be careful. Alright, just gotta um, smudge the E, dot the top, there. Blue? Yeah? What the shit is this? Shh, quiet! Why are you smearing blood on the walls? For research. Sheriff Bigby has us recreating the crime scene from Rose Red's apartment upstairs. Wait, what happened to Rose Red? Don't know. She's gone missing. We only have the day to do this, and we need your help. No maple glazed? Donuts? Thank you, Pinocchio. Are there any powder? Finish that message first. Then, wash your hands a few times. What the hell kind of research? We're supposed to copy the furniture land of Rose Red's place, and then try to recreate the blood splatter from these photos. Bigby wants to see how much it takes. Making a mess is a nice change of pace. Where are you getting all of this? Tell me there isn't blood in that cooler. Nope! Definitely blood! The uh, sheriff got the bags from Dr. Swinehart. Oh, see, you think that helps. We don't want to be doing this either, but the sheriff asked us to. Rose Red could be in some real danger, or worse. Oh, this is too fucking weird, man. Grab a bag, Pinocchio. We need to spread some on the couch like in the picture. You're kidding. I have to get to work. Just enough time for me to get you up to speed on the process. <sighs> you owe me. Two weeks we've been covering your chores at home. What? The job market's tricky when you look like a 12-year-old. Flycatcher, please use the photos. See? You need to get more on the lower shelves. Oh, sorry. Uh... I asked you and Flycatcher to do this for me. I did not ask you to bring in your roommate. We needed another pair of hands, Sheriff. <sighs> Pinocchio's good for it. I promise, he won't say anything. If I get the slightest whiff of anyone talking about you three, I'm holding him responsible. You tell him that. Of course. Goodbye, Sheriff. Rose's apartment is just upstairs. If you absolutely have to, you can go up to check out the scene. But don't trample all over the evidence. Don't let Amundi see anything. And don't forget to lock up after. I'll be back after work. Good, Pinocchio. Now you take that wall all by yourself. <sighs> this is so fucked. Have fun, boys. Sleep well, Jack. <laughs> Brought you some breakfast, if you're hungry. I've been locked in here all night. What do you think? Let's make this quick, then. Bigby, I want to help find out what happened to Rosie. I'm not the one who hurt her. Then who did? You're the sheriff. You figure it out. <laughs> I can add obstruction to the charges. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Bluebeard, maybe. Bluebeard. I don't know, man. Could have been anybody. But you said Bluebeard. Why? I don't want to get in trouble, Bigby. Can't just go accusing people of murder without a reason. I thought Bluebeard was a pillar of the community. Yeah, and he was a psycho back in the homelands. You know what he used to do to his wives, right? Those were pre-amnesty days, Jack. You can't bring that up. Why would he hurt Rose? We... We broke up for a little while. She went on a few dates with him, but she dumped him as soon as we got back together. Maybe he was holding a grudge. Or maybe he fell off the wagon. Alright, that's enough for now. You keep an apartment here in the building, right? Yeah. But you had your own key to Rose's place. I stay over with her most nights. Why not last night? I don't know. I was out late, and I guess I didn't want to wake her, so I crashed at my place. You know, it's funny. Grimble doesn't remember you coming in. He was asleep behind the desk like he always is. Are we done? I'm starving. Ah, uh, sit. Come on, man. I'm innocent. You may not have done anything this time, but you were never innocent. You're always trying to beat the system, Jack. That time you tried to steal seven league boots to win the New York Marathon. Boston Marathon. I'm not an idiot. I kept it out of state, away from Fable Town. What about the time you tried to raffle off the map to your last magic beans? I have a right to make money off my own property. Except the map was a fake, and you lost the beans centuries ago. If you ever even had him at all. None of this proves I'd hurt Rose. I'm not violent. Not lately. But you did go through that remarkably bloody giant killing phase way back when. What happened to pre-amnesty? Or does that protection only apply to granny guzzling wolves when they wear human suits and pretend to be low-rent cops? <laughs> uh, 
Watch your mouth, boy. Easy, man. Is Rose dead? Did you kill her? No, of course not. Did you put her body somewhere? What? No. So you don't mind if I take a look inside your apartment? Damn straight, I mind. Tough shit. You live in the building. I don't need your permission. W well, I, I got nothing to hide. Good to hear. Enjoy your breakfast. Cool your heels for a while, Jack. We'll pick this up later. What? Are you kidding me? I expect a sunny disposition when I get back. Wait a minute, Bigby. B Bigby! Here are the forms you asked for, Miss White. Thank you, Buffkin. Lovely morning, isn't it? Yes, lovely. Out of our way, Blue. Ladies, Miss White's only just arrived. You need an appointment- Why the hell is he back in town? <sighs> Lady Briar Rose and Miss Cinderella to see you, ma'am. I'm sorry I'm late. Sheriff sure Bigby had me in flight It's fine, Blue. Do you need anything? A coffee? Uh, yes. Right away. Charming is back on the prowl. I'm aware. A heads up would have been nice. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was in charge of the ex-wives newsletter. <sighs> but you know what he's like. Why didn't you think to tell us? It's in hand, girls. Charming and I are meeting for lunch and I'm working to get rid of him as quickly as possible. You mean he asked you for lunch? I would have expected a little more gratitude. Since he reached out to me first, I can chase him off before he gloms onto you two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweetie. Hello, darling. Goodbye, Charming. But... Hello, beautiful. Miss me? Out. <laughs> Could you pass me up my luggage, sweetheart? It's... <sighs> I can't deal with this right now. Here's your coffee, ma'am. Thank you, Blue. Are you alright? Is this about Rose? What about Rose? She's gone missing. What? Where did you hear that, Cindy? I don't know. Around? From who? Please, everybody's talking about it. Nobody in this town can keep a secret except their own. Is that why Big B arrested Jack? <gasps> he did? Who told you that? Ambrose mentioned it this morning. Uh, Flycatcher? Be nice. The poor boy hates that name and he's too sweet to say anything. It only happened that one time. <laughs> than anyone saw. Cindy. <sighs> Girls, the sheriff's barely started his investigation. As of right now, we are not prepared to release a comment to the public. That's not an answer. It's the only one you're going to get for now. Uh, can I get a hand here? Well, I've got you. Thanks, Blue. Whose computer is that? Girls, if you wouldn't mind, we have a lot of business to do <sighs> with right now. Please do not spread any rumors about Rose's disappearance or Jack's detention. The last thing we need is an unfounded panic. <sighs> of course. I hope that you find her safe. Me too, Snow. Thank you. Let me get the door for you ladies. Sheriff? Briar. See ya, Big. Yeah. Where did you get all this? Not from Jack's apartment. I just finished tossing it. It was full of setups like this. I was hoping you could snoop through this one and maybe figure out what Jack's been doing with him. Why don't you do it? Because the damn things hate me. I can't operate anything more complex than my toaster. And what are you going to be doing yes. while I'm doing your job for you? I'm sure you're far too busy to worry yourself over details like this. Blue and Buffkin are going to do it. <sighs> I guess, if that's all right with Miss White. Oh, excellent. I haven't had internet privileges for some time. See? Everybody's happy. So if I'd traipsed up here an hour ago and told you I wanted to talk to your boss, I could walk in right now and see him? Correct. That is the definition of an appointment, Sheriff. But there's no one in with him right now. Not presently. Huh. Jack's right. That's really fucking annoying. Lord Bluebeard is quite busy and does not entertain unexpected guests. This entire apartment building is my jurisdiction, pal. I don't need an appointment to question a resident. Lord Bluebeard should be expecting us, actually. <laughs> I called ahead. Hello, Miss White. As scheduled. Sheriff Bigby will be joining us. Very well. Please, won't you come in? Thank you, Hobbs. What are you doing? 
Saving your investigation by the looks of it. You can't tag along on this stuff, Snow. We've both got jobs to do. But you're more than happy to dump evidence on me when you don't feel like dealing with it. Mm. You wouldn't even be getting in to see Bluebeard right now if it weren't for me. More flies with honey, Sheriff. Yeah, that's how you get bears, too. <laughs> Careful now. You keep telling jokes and people might think you have an emotion other than surly. Must have slipped out. Follow me, please. I had heard Bluebeard was well off. So what's he doing down on the fourth floor? Why didn't he take one of the bigger apartments higher up? You'll see. Hmm. Huh. Moneybags got himself one of those magical, bigger-on-the-inside deals, like your office. How did he pull this off? He was one of the fortunate few to get out of the homelands with his riches intact. Hmm. His whole goddamn castle, too. Rumor has it that he ran his own underground railroad and smuggled other fables out of the homelands, even after the adversary's armies invaded. But he charged a dear price for his services. So all those lost fortunes from the exile ended up in Bluebeard's lap rather than the adversaries? So I'm told. But we'll never know for sure. That was pre-amnesty business. You'd need more than a couple wizardly types to fit a whole castle in a studio apartment. And they don't work cheap. Your guests, sir. Leave us, Hobbs. <sighs> Thank you for agreeing to see us, Lord Bluebeard. We won't take up much of your time. Not to worry. Sit down. Make yourselves at home. I assume you're here to collect my annual budget contribution? I usually give it directly to King Cole at the Remembrance Day Gala, but if you need it early this year... No, my lord, we don't. That's not why we're here. Take a look at these photos. They were taken in Rose Red's apartment last night. And all that blood is hers. What happened? Damn it, I knew I forgot to ask the murderer something. So, why did you kill her? What? How dare you? Sheriff! How dare I what? Speak rudely to a mass murderer? That's what you do, right? You marry them and then gut them? Mr. Wolf, that's enough! You are an impertinent man! I demand satisfaction! Fuck your satisfaction. I think you killed her, and I'm ready to arrest you for it right now. Big B, stop this! Convene your trial, Snow. I'm charging this pompous asswipe with Rose Red's murder. How dare you treat me in such a fashion! Boo fucking who? Lord Bluebeard, I apologize for the Sheriff's mishandling of this investigation. He isn't cooperating. He's refused to answer a single question. You haven't asked any. I'm willing to cooperate. Then quit your fucking dissembling and answer. Did you kill her? No. Did you harm her in any way? No. Never. Bigby, sit down. <sighs> Where were you last night? Here. All day and all night. I seldom go out. A year ago, you were socially buddy-buddy with Rose Red. Were you two romantically involved, or was she just a trophy date for public occasions? Romantically. And you got mad when she dumped you to slut her way back to her own boyfriend? No, because she never dumped me, to use her own crude vernacular. We're still together, though we've learned to be discreet about our relationship. <laughs> really? My lord, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. A year ago, at the Remembrance Day Gala, Rose Red and I became engaged. You... what? For reasons all her own, she insisted on keeping our engagement secret for one calendar year. A condition to which I agree. Is he telling the truth? I don't know. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. Of course I'm telling the truth. And in this case, I can prove it. How? We formalized our engagement in writing. I assume you can verify her signature? You made my sister sign a contract promising to marry you? Only because there was a payment involved. A year ago, I paid her a considerable dowry. If such a term also applies to a payment made by a prospective groom to the prospective bride. You paid Rose Red to marry you? You make it sound vulgar. I did not buy her affection. The transaction happened long after our relationship began. Rose Red was and remains my fiance. And I am offering a one million dollar reward for the discovery and capture of whoever took her. If she is truly the victim of some foul violence, I will be devastated. And she will be avenged. End of chapter two. Next time on Fables Radio, Chapter 3, Blood Tells.